So I'll go ahead and share my screen and show uh, what everybody probably came to see, which is the Death Star blowing up. Uh, but in all honesty, public data sets is, are where I've cut my teeth um, on Tableau and been able to bring that into my work at Georgia Tech. And, and the, way, uh, the closest I can um, compare what I do at Tech with visualization work is like data journalist, like we're seeing now a lot of data journalism with COVID-19 uh, dashboards and uh, 538 does regular data journalism. Uh, so basically, um, everything I do is for public consumption professionally and for a personal interest. So you have to have a pretty thick skin uh, just to put your visualizations out in the wild. Uh, so I'm going to figure out where my presentation is. And uh, basically, uh, I've had about five years of experience in Tableau. And so this is one of my early visualizations. It's just a simple uh, filter where you hover filter action and you can blow up the Death Star. Those are, those are shapes. So there's just five shapes uh, for this visualization. And uh, if you want to see the full viz, you can go check out why I was trying to blow up the, uh, the Death Star. And uh, it's fairly easy because I came to this from the communications and marketing background, had no idea how to use data, but Tableau is so incredibly intuitive. Uh, it, was, it was very simple for me to jump in and, and learn it. And I've, I've never looked back to be a to be honest with you, excuse me, um, I've just kept going and going and going. So if you haven't already taken the plunge, and a lot of people have, uh, basically doing Tableau for personal uh, hobby type visas, uh, that's what's great about our community. A lot of people have already done it. But if you're in your comfort zone, uh, I would say you should do it because we're in a media saturated society with YouTube videos, memes, illustrations, animations. Uh, we basically can introduce visualizations into the conversation and have more, I think, interesting conversations with data. And like I've already said, you get really good with your data skills because um, where to start, uh, you start with your personal interest and you actually put a lot of passion. It'll reflect in your data visualization. Uh, the, the work that you're passionate about, uh, you'll, you'll take time to you know, narrow the story that you're trying to t tell or to figure out the focus and the design uh, information design you want to share. Uh, so uh, getting started is kind of easy. You have to have the confidence, I think, in your skills. Everybody here has a certain skill set. They're comfortable with the data. And uh, it's a matter of just packing up those data skills and going out into the wild. Uh, you have to throw your, your baby across to the other bank, like in this picture, and see if it survives and thrives or if uh, it dies in the wild, right? Um, so you can start with something hard. Uh, why not start with something hard? So Star Wars, everybody knows that's a, that's a thing, right? Star Wars, if you haven't heard of it, uh, you probably don't care about science fiction. But put your own spin on something. Um, I'm going to break some of my own rules because on the far left is an older visualization. But I'll touch on what I think makes for uh, a visualization that can capture people's interest really quickly. Because that's, you only have a couple seconds to capture people's interest on the internet, right? Uh, so come up with a, a good headline, Dirty Little Droid. If you're a Star Wars fan, you know R2-D2 spends a lot of time in the desert. So this is basically just a scatter plot. R2 is a, a scatter plot with the dirt on him. And um, because of Ryan's sleeper, I learned how to do images in the background. So that's a background image actually mapped onto the X and Y axis. But this breaks a lot of other rules that you probably shouldn't do. Uh, I gave too many filters up at the top. I thought I was being cute with all the filters like uh, Princess Leia, but it might be a little overwhelming. Fast forward a few years to the Sarlacc pit, and this kind of reflects my own interest in Star Wars these days. I'm kind of, uh, it's feeling a little bit bloated. So the Sarlacc pit ate every Star Wars story, except for the good ones. Um, and uh, it's, this is a radio bar chart. It's kind of hard to do a custom radio bar chart with custom teeth that have to be angled differently all the way around, but it was, it was a fun thing to do with a public data set. So uh, start someplace harder, start someplace easy, either way you'll learn. Um, so the simple things that you can do, uh, this I thought was just fun and sustainable. The others are just more one-offs, right? You create it as one and done. Might be hard to update unless you really keep track of it, but this is a Project Gutenberg public domain books. So please, please, please don't buy your classics off of Kindle. You can get Kindle eBooks, EPUBs, 
uh, for free instead of paying three bucks, uh, three dollars rather. Um, and then because of a simple trick, you know, you have to have interaction, right? Capture people's interest with something they're interested in, but make sure there's a value for them to going and playing with it and make it obvious you can play with it. So we'll talk more about how do you make it more obvious that you can play with these. They're not just infographics, uh, but Charles Dickens uh, on the top 100 list for the past week, you can see that he has a lot of best or not best sellers, but uh, lots of downloads. And those are the native ranks uh, courtesy of a table calculation from a Joe Mako workbook. Um, so give people that that extra context. Don't just do a index where, you know, it'll be books one through six. These are the actual native ranks, which I really uh, thought it added a little bit of value. And then what I think uh, you can do, you can uh, move into is do something simple and design focused, right? You may not think you have the time, but you're at work, you're finding data all day long you know, in news articles and whatnot. Uh, you may not think you're a designer and you may be worried about if you can't design, what if you borrow assets off the internet? Is it copyrighted? Uh, you know, there's no one simple decision uh, when, you're, when you're approaching a story you care about, but just use your own judgment about you're, you're a fan for something, you're not making money, you're just, you're, you're creating like everybody does on the internet. You're, you're being an artist, so to speak. And uh, here on the screen, uh, this is a simple story. Every single Netflix show out there, and it's uh, what the audiences and the critics think about the uh, Marvel shows. Uh, so the left and right side, a uh, really simple line chart, but then I stole Netflix's original art for the Punisher, uh, the giant skull is the Punisher skull, and uh, they didn't come after me. I mean, I'm spreading the love. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to make money off of their art or anything like that. So uh, uh, that adds to the design and obviously gives the audience right away an idea of what, what's going on, I hope. And so, you know, Christian and Anna, they're doing the hard work, right? They, they did a very, you know, good presentation on serious topics. But I think whatever you do, whether it's personal or, or for work, right now is the time where you can start doing, uh, I think, more user-focused data visualization work. Because Tableau 20.2 um, made bar charts more inter interesting. Uh, they made them fun again because of animations and then set actions as Nelson mentioned in parameter actions are more intuitive. They're, they're being advanced to make them again, end user focused or user experience focused. So uh, this is a really simple bar chart. And if you put a parameter action in and you allow people to animate the parameter or the, their selection, it just makes it much more fluid, I think. And, uh, Set actions, I think, uh, are have arrived. Um, someone can probably push back on that statement, but uh, I never use set actions. But basically, giving people more control, more agency uh, to be part of the data story. Uh, this is just uh, books with that are very long, or book series that are very long, and ones that are finished and not finished. As you can see, George R. R. Martin is, I don't think, going to finish Game of Thrones at the bottom here, but. Um, people can take the set action and they can, uh, if you go to the active or the interactive version of this, you can actually select the books you want added and the little yellow dots will populate. Uh, Kevin, or yes, Kevin Fleurage or uh, Fleurage, he had a very good blog post on this and goes deep into it if you want to check out uh, set actions, which I think again are a great, great uh, user experience now with, with the new functionality. All right. So scrape like a champ. People might be thinking, how do you even get started? Uh, this, this is a bit of a learning curve, but there's one free tool I use, and I really hope there's others out there, because this one I kind of depend on. And then I learned in another one of these Atlanta Tug meetings about the uh, Google Sheets import HTML function. If you can find a list on Wikipedia or tables on Wikipedia, uh, there's so much free data out there. It's a matter of what you care about. I do want to demonstrate uh, really quickly the functionality of import.io. It's really good at structured data, as you would guess it should be, and it's really intuitive. Uh, it's free, up to 500 URLs, and they have this little thing called extractors. Uh, so you can extract a URL, and apparently the New York Times keeps track of the best movies on Netflix. It doesn't look like it's structured data, but it's 
great licensed content available on Netflix as of last week and the New York Times maintains it. And so instead of doing something that you maybe not have time to do, which is cut and paste, you cut and paste that URL into import.io. And uh, the structured data that it provides is really clean and it's an intuitive code free uh, way to capture public data sets. So I discovered this a long time ago and I've tried other things which haven't necessarily stuck around or panned out. So again, I'm uh, just holding my breath here. Um, it can't find anything right now. So you take, go to the, take me to the point and click the manual iteration. And the great thing is, is you just can point and click and you go down to what you want to try to capture. And because the New York Times has a really good web developer, there's a table associated with that headline uh, for that first movie. And bam, you click yes, and hey, it just works. Josh, we're only seeing your uh, your PowerPoint. We're not seeing, uh, I think you're clicking on uh, import.io. Oh, well, yeah, I guess <laughs> you might, I might have to vouch for it. Um, it's in the PowerPoint presentation. Sorry about that. Thanks, Nelson. So what we'll have to do is um, go and point and click on import.io. Uh, I, would, I would highly recommend that. Uh, I don't know how to flip. Are we back on the PowerPoint? You are, man. You're good. Okay. Uh, so you, you take the effort, you go this route, you, you kind of do data at work and data at home if you, if you, uh, if you want to do that like I do. But what's, uh, what are the key ingredients to giving yourself an, a chance to find an audience? People are busy. People might not know uh, the amount of analytical work and the information that you're giving to them, right? So I've found in my experience uh, just four bullet points. Uh, Everybody calls themselves something different in this business, but I, I, I like to focus on information design. <clears throat> information design, uh, you don't have to be a, a classic designer, but you can simply uh, learn how to pull out the story you want by focusing on, number one, engaging headlines, give people that first impression, and then labels and annotations. You may think it's a no-brainer, and these, these may be givens, uh, which you do every day, you know how to do this, but then you have to focus in on what you're actually annotating and what you want people to pay attention to. And to be honest with you, you can do a great interactive experience on desktop, but then you have to figure out what people are going to immediately understand uh, is something they can play with. Uh, so it's just, it's really a matter of iterating. And, and in this example, uh, uh, Ken Fleurage, the, the uh, elder, or excuse me, the younger of the Fleurage twins, I'll get their name right eventually, um, he did a great custom uh, format for a curvy timeline. So again, using Tableau in the community to create some inter interesting story and keeping that in, in your back pocket, I think it's possible if, if you want to go that route. Um, I promised new content for this group, not just for this group, but to, to kind of unveil some new content. Um, and it's pretty timely, uh, but just emphasizing uh, when you're on desktop, you go to server, you need to test, 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 because you know what you want when you consume media on the internet. And as much as you love and you want to have a lot of interaction on your dashboards, you might need to scale it back to one or two. That really uh, engages people and draws them in to spend some time with your work that you've, you've created over whatever period of time. Um, so strip the interactivity down and then optimize it once you know uh, how things are operating on Tableau Public. And I will go to this really quick. Um, I hope you can actually see this. If, if not, then um, you get to have the bonus of playing with this afterward. Oh, I know how to share this screen. Okay. Uh, so just to give you a teaser, uh, Watchmen came out in December and it's really timely because uh, it, it deals with racism. You know, the world, the world kind of has turned upside down in a number of different ways. So people often love stories, people engage with stories. So how do you, how do you have hard conversations? You do it through storytelling. So if you like superheroes, you like women driven narratives, um, you might be attracted to this, but if you actually watch the show, you, you'll realize there's a deeper meaning and deeper message. And if you just wanna see the actresses filmographies, then you, <laughs> you have that opportunity. Um, I won't belabor the point uh, in our, won't, I guess I can't show the interaction right now, but uh, 
this is setting the stage, this top part, this 4,500 pixel visualization. And I had the analytics of it, which is below the fold or <laughs> below the screen. Um, when you get a chance to interact with it, I'll have these slides available after. But the analytics took a little bit of time and it, they happened right away because I had the data from IMDB, but then setting the stage right here is it's one of the greatest shows on HBO at, within three and a half uh, decades of programming and the history of the, the actual source material and then the characters, uh, who are you actually focusing the story on? I felt that was important and that took me, you know, stepping away from the visualization and each night coming back to it and saying, eh, that doesn't work or that's really bad and kind of stepping away to kind of be more objective about the work itself. Uh, so I hope uh, you will visit that. I'll actually push it out. I haven't actually advertised it on social media. I'll push that out after this. And, um, you know, again, it's something if you're not familiar with, I hope you like it. Um, promoting your work. Uh, we just saw the great animations from the COVID maps and GIFs are the one of the easiest way to let people know something's interactive. And so this visualization doesn't have a lot of a lot to it. There's labels and it's a dot plot, but if you do a GIF, you can know that you get to play with it. So um, I would highly encourage you. I still haven't found the optimal solution for GIFs, but uh, I would highly encourage you to get a workflow that includes you after doing all the work, being able to give it the best chance of people playing with it um, when you do share it publicly. And the, the, basically going back to how organizations, you're using organizational data, uh, they make it publicly available, but uh, different brands have different reactions to how you might uh, use their data, uh, honestly. Uh, they know because visualizations just aren't, you know, funny memes and they're not YouTube commentary videos. They're a totally different way of engaging people. And I've gotten some weird re reactions uh, from brands or I've had good reactions, but one in particular, uh, they prevented me from scraping their website. This was just a fake uh, competition between fictional characters. <laughs> so if you want to have a smog, the dragon from the Hobbit fighting Voldemort from Bilba Baggins, or uh, excuse me, from um, Harry Potter, they basically created fake fictional fights. And I did a bump chart of it and they, they eventually stopped me from scraping it and I got really nervous. But then when I published this, they liked my tweet. So it was a, it was a really inconsistent message I got from uh, that publishing company. But uh, I've never had you know, anybody say you can't use copyrighted material and so on and so forth. But again, uh, you have to go and decide you know how you want to publicly you know share your your passion for whatever work you're doing and, and uh, people shouldn't have a problem with it unless they uh, unless they really don't want you to use their data um, really briefly uh, public data sources I use Wikipedia a lot I give them a dollar a month because they have a great list and tables and we've already covered uh, Importio hopefully there's a plan B out there I'd love to know if, who else is using uh, different code free tools. And it was mentioned in 22, a lot of the great new functions, but um, exploring workbooks and reverse engineering workbooks in the browser is now available. I don't know if it's exactly attached to 20.2, it's just attached to uh, the Tableau public server. And you can actually open up workbooks and this is a screenshot to look at calculations and quickly find something you might like about another workbook without having to download it. So, um, you know you've arrived when you actually do put something on social media and you get trolled or people kind of uh, actually react, not the Tableau community because you guys are great at reacting on Twitter and supporting and, and sharing uh, the work. Everybody shares freely, but we're talking just random people. With this uh, best of the decade list for video games from CNET, the editor was great. He was like, cool, I like it, you know? And then people started debating if this was actually a good list, not, not the work itself, but they started debating, no, these are not the best video games. And then I skipped a whole decade of music. So I'm, I'm grateful to Stereo Gum for actually uh, producing the best 200 songs of the decade. And yes, I used their exact art um, from their article and I attributed it to them. So, you know, you have to, again, decide how you want to actually engage with um, people you're, you're getting this data from if it's, um, news organizations or whatnot. 
And that ends my official presentation and hopefully the beginning of your journey into pop culture visiting. That was awesome, Josh, I love that. Thanks. Um, we had one question come in just like right at the end. Hang on, I think it was in the chat. Someone was interested to see that last one, how you edited the browser. Oh, editing in the browser. Um, that's amazing. Tableau Public keeps uh, adding to its functionality. So I'll go to the web. So we actually got to the web here. So you can go in. Uh, do you see the, the visualization on Tableau Public? Okay. So right here at the top, you basically go to edit. And you can do this for any author on Tableau Public that makes their work available. And that's, that's about 95, 99% of the community. And so within the browser, it's, it's right here. I mean, it's not one for one parity with the desktop version, uh, but you can actually go here and there's a lot of functionality. And if you wanna see even right here in this worksheet at the top of this visualization, you go in here and it pulls up the worksheet and you can see the calculations and all the, all the data pane and everything. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool that you can do that in the web. And if you don't want to save it, your own work, I think you can actually, uh, you can save this workbook elsewhere to your profile and then you can, I think it automatically attributes to the original author. So it's, it's a brand new function. I can't tell you everything that happens in it, but uh, I've made little tweaks, th those insufferable tweaks with floating objects that you don't want to open up a whole workbook just to change <laughs> those floating objects. Yeah. Um, a perfect example is we actually get to see the, the new work I just published. This is a floating object on your own. Um, uh, bar chart. This is a whole different worksheet, but all of them exist on every single um, actress and, and they, oh, see that one's not even aligned. So you can align things with floating objects and make small tweaks, which is just really fun.